Hello and welcome to The Big Fight. It's been a rather interesting week. Bans on beef, a ban on a documentary, restrictions on Google and YouTube and whether they should show the documentary or not. Obviously, instructions and strictures on TV channels not to air the documentary. We really seem to be, if I can be pardoned a really bad pun, we really seem to be jumping onto a bandwagon. And we are wondering what all is going to be banned by the time this particular week is over. Um, where exactly are we headed? Are some of these bans justified, not justified? What does it mean for broader concepts like the freedom of speech and the freedom of the media? Those are some of the issues that we're going to be discussing over the next one hour right here on The Big Fight. Let me start off by welcoming all of our guests. Uh, joining us from Mumbai, China NC, spokesperson of the, the BJP. Joining us from Ahmedabad, Dushyant Dave, senior advocate at the Supreme Court. Uh, Kiran K.S. joins us uh, from Bangalore, one of the best-known bloggers and writers, very prominent on social media. Uh, Kiran, it's always a pleasure to have you with us here on The Big Fight. Joining us here in the studio, Dr. Ajay Kumar, spokesperson of the Congress Party. We have with us Aditya Mukherjee, who's a professor of contemporary Indian history at the Center for Historical Studies. Suhail Seth joins us, managing partner at Council Age. Abhinandan Sekri, co-founder of News Laundry, is with us as well. And finally, uh, Subhi Chaturvedi, who's an activist and an academician. Thank you all so much for being with us. All right. First of all, the very concept of banning things. Can I just get everyone's take on that? At the end of the day, given the sort of, given the society that we are in, if you're banning media, people are in many ways more likely to end up watching it or consuming it in some way or the other. Banning beef may well either drive it underground or you go to some other state and doing it. Prohibition has always not worked. The overall principles of, of banning something. Uh, Shana, why don't I start off with you? Is this, the, is this the right approach to take? I mean, when you ban things, do these bans ever really work? I don't think you need to view this as a, a, a regressive policy. The thought is that, uh, yes, there are people in our country who worship the cow. The needs in today's day and age when half the world is talking about being vegan, even the health benefits uh, about, uh, you know, you can have the choice of what you want to eat. But to slaughter cows when you know that there is an economic uh, agenda as well, there is a sociological impact. And more importantly, you've had the father of the nation propagate this for the longest time, and nobody seems to question that. The moment the BJP thinks of this as a progressive law, which was uh, something that was addressed in 1995 as well. Unfortunately, right, the then president didn't give the go-ahead in 96. <clears throat> this time it's happened, so I think we should welcome it and view it in okay. totality so as something which preserves animal rights as well. So you're specifically talking about the beef ban again, and you're saying that that, that particular ban is justified. Let me just get everyone else in. Ajay? You know, uh, there are certain things like banning terrorist organizations, keeping a view on, you know, the Indian Mujahideen and is fine. I mean, that's okay. necessary. So but definitely banning on, a terrorist on, organization is one thing, but see what else you can ban. So he'll say it. I think the culture of banning itself is regressive. It is anti-democratic. It makes a monkey out of people's free will. If I want to eat beef, I should be allowed to eat beef. I mean, the whole example of Mahatma Gandhi in its historical context is a bit all right because it was the same Gandhi who camped in Noakhali and tried telling a beef-eating Muslim that, sorry, you can't eat beef anymore and then blame it on Gandhi is a bit of a stretch. I have a fundamental view here. If in this country we can't manage to get policies framed through logic, we then use the illogical path of ban. Because ban almost suggests that we are catering to a whim or a fancy of a fringe element. I mean, no one, China's point itself, logically favors no ban on beef. If this was a law that was passed in 1995, their government was in power in Maharashtra till 1999, why would you take a step when there's already a fear amongst the minorities, qua the government at the center? Why would you create a perceptual fear amongst minorities saying, we are not only interested in clamping down on your behavior, we will also clamp down on your diet, <coughs> A, B. The culture of banning doesn't work in India. We are a rebellious society. If you tell 10 Indians to stand in a queue in a straight line, six will ask why. Our culture is to revolt. So, you know, we will always find a way out of a ban. Do you think people in Gujarat <laughs> don't drink even though there's prohibition? Bans have never worked. They have benefited a fringe element they have benefited political expediency. And what's worse, as you rightly said, Ajay talked about it, China talked about it, is hamame sab nange hain. All political parties use ban as the ultimate 
speedy bullet that they have to fire. Okay, Look Dushyant, at satanic verses, for instance. Dushyant, I, unfortunately, in a democratic country, we do have a history of banning. And as, as he says, a lot of people have done it. Now, what is your view on the legal position on all of this? How many things can be and should be banned? Now, there's been a, in addition to the beef ban, there's been a, what some would consider a rather extreme reaction to the, to the documentary also, to the extent where we are now writing to you know foreign countries and saying make sure it's not telecast pull it off the internet everywhere don't anybody talk about it how far is this likely to be successful what, what's the legal view on this i i don't agree with my good friend Suhail said when he says that bans are not good for democracy every democracy needs power to ban question is whether in a particular case that power has been exercised in the right way or wrong way that's the real issue so far as beef ban is concerned, you are talking about right to do business. And there, I don't think you really, uh, I mean, frankly, it would be very difficult in a court of law for any such ban to be sustained. Although I must tell you that Supreme Court's constitution bench has already held that cow slaughter should be banned. So therefore, it, and it, was, it upheld the Gujarat law. So it really is, it depends on what kind of an exercise of power, as Soel rightly points out, that beef bam is going to create really serious issues so far as the minority community is concerned. But so far as the documentary is concerned, I am totally in agreement of it that it must be banned. It's a very valid exercise of power. Unfortunately, there is no law which can really entitle or empower on. Let me just take you up on that. To exercise you are sure that the documentary... Is an executive action. Dishan, can I just ask and you that? that's a little problem. All right, you're saying the documentary Sorry. definitely should have been banned. Have you seen the documentary? I have read the transcripts, and that's good enough for me to come to a conclusion. Come on. Oh, come on. Have so you haven't but, seen the documentary? But, uh, but remember, because, good friends like Dushyant only no. read when no, they are paid to read. I have read the transcripts, full <laughs> transcripts. <laughs> okay, you know, you've I read mean. the full transcript, and therefore you're convinced no, it should it, have been banned. All right, we'll come back to the documentary clear. in just a couple of minutes. I, I'm just getting everyone's overall stance, and then we'll come to each of these debates in a minute. But Kiran... Your view on, 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 on banning, I mean, look, you're, you're so active on social media, and frankly, when you see a lot of the views that are expressed on, on social media and Twitter, they are really extreme, and you sometimes wish there was more control, and half the people on Twitter should be banned, or if not half, at least a third of them should be banned. But at the end of the day, in the 21st century, are we living in a situation where there will be free flow of information, and banning things in any cases, I'm not sure how productive it's going to be. When it comes to ban, we should really, really be careful because I'm not a pro-ban guy for most of the things. Uh, there are very, very extreme situations where bans will have to come into picture, but we should definitely avoid it. Like, let's talk about the documentary. Documentary was not made with a, with a spy camera from somebody mm -hmm. sitting abroad or anything of that sort. There were very clear guidelines given. There were paperwork done. And more than 15 to 20 hours of interviews were done in the presence of all sorts of officials over the last two years. So if we are in a situation where we are discussing whether the documentary of BBC should be banned or not, it's a very unfortunate situation because it could have been prevented long back if uh, they didn't want to give access. And blame game is uh, different, but it's a systemic lapse. Uh, when it comes to the cow slaughter thing, it's not really a ban as such. Okay, uh, this is one odd issue where we have to keep it separate. It's more like saving a life. Saving a life of a cow, which is more like a civilizational icon of India, is very different from calling it as a ban. It's not a ban, it's more of a save. And we can definitely talk more about it later. Okay, I'll come to both of them. Avinandan Sekri, you've, you've also looked at this and you've written about this, and you're saying that there are definite freedom of speech issues also, yeah. especially when it comes to the ban on the documentary. Yeah, um, and also, you know, people are actually asking for censorship exactly. within the I, media. I would talk about that specifically. If you just um, the overall picture, I'll come to that later. I, I don't agree with Sohail where he says Indians are basically rebellious. On the contrary, we are so submissive, which is why, you know, even today, you know, if you go down south, my mother, South Indian, uh, lower caste will, without being asked to take his or her slippers off before entering Brahmin's house. I mean, we are the most, you know, we are like herds. You know, we're like cattle. So, so many centuries, we do not rebel at all. But we'll come to that later. When you talk about freedoms, uh, A, I would advise Ms. NC that when you are propagating a ban or arguing in favor of it, you should have a very clear, this is the reason. Half your reason can't be religious, half kind of superstition, half is vegan, half is environment. That's the worst way to make an argument. It comes across looking terrible. 
इट ऑब्वियसली डजन कम फ्रॉम कन्वेक्शन इट्स यू आप डिसाइड टू दिस अब देखते हैं क्या क्या कर सकते हैं टू बट आर्ग्यूमेंट बट कमिंग टू फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच आई थिंक दैट इज एन एब्सल्यूट एंड द रीजन कंट्रीज दैट हैव डन रियली वेल have managed to come up with such amazing ideas is because they have put restrictions freedom of speech if there were restrictions freedom of speech we would still be thinking the earth is flat the earth is center of the universe you know philosophers have been killed for challenging the accepted norm so i think that is ridiculous and i would like to specially point out and i hope you will not uh, you know get pissed off if i have taken the names of your rival channels what some journalists and especially arnab did on times now a journalist saying freedom of speech should be shut down of a rival channel is for me the nail in the coffin for a journalist if you do that you have forfeited your right to be called a journalist because in a country like india that does not have constitutional provisions like the first amendment the see, first and last ago, i would have interrupted you at this point <laughs> you said let's not name any other channel no i think But we I should name because it's healthy it, it it need not come from you know some sort of a venom or anger you can just honestly critique and i i think i'm a sweet guy otherwise but that as a journalist is an another journalist uh, something avasthi i saw his twitter timeline from ibn he is saying this ndtv is film should be banned as journalists you are doing that dude you don't even know what you're doing and why you're doing it okay i mean you are the first and last line of defense for freedom of speech in the country that does not have the first amendment okay so let me let me turn to you then then subhi on that point his his point specifically about as as journalists and the freedom of speech is that something which we should continue to fight for? i mean let's face it all of us were walking around saying Jesui Charlie in the freedom of speech and all that and frankly what Jesu what what Charlie did was pretty darn awful but at that time it became a big issue of freedom of speech why is some of these bans on an issue of freedom of speech right now why is and and especially when if you actually most of the people who are asking for bans in many cases have not even seen the documentary if you and you may see the documentary you may not like the documentary you may not agree with the documentary but is there something uh, something to do with the freedom of speech out here uh vikram it's important that we contextualize the debate right and when we start with politicians the danger is that it tends to be framed in a manner where we don't really come to the core issue we there are multiple threads here and it is important that we realize that our constitution guarantees freedom of speech and expression so before we invoke leaders and cults and personalities it's a really unfortunate nation that requires heroes to be invoked at each every passing moment every time uh it is important that we consider this because what is it that you're trying to do you're trying to save india's daughters now i have a lot of problems with the rhetoric there are many other things that indian women and youth are other than mothers daughters but what was important you had problems with the documentary you've seen the documentary uh, and you yes, have problems with I it yes i have seen the documentary i think it is an honest enquiry into what went on and what is important for us to realize is <laughs> what your is it that uh absolutely not completely unacceptable we have a history of responding to diffusions we have a history of responding to cultures what is most unfortunate right now is here is a government that has been voted into power with a full majority that wanted to work on the plank of development and is now talking about conversations which take us back into the deep dark ages annals of history why do i have a problem with the ban it contests my right to freedom of choice expression speech consumption everything else comes <coughs> into question when you decide to enact laws which protect me and what you're trying to do is quell dissent did any okay. of them no it's important for me to uh, ask this question before the ban was imposed and before they're all trying to fight to protect us women india's daughters did they bother to watch the documentary what is it that we've done about the rape statistics what is it that we've done about the overall situation that doesn't shame us the fact that we're having an open conversation because the man in question was languishing in jail he was not out in the open he was okay. not on the streets we so have let's get other people's issue. takes on this your your reaction first of all to the ban in general and are there freedom of speech issues in some of this so on on the ban in general in a democratic open society there is no space for it if you ban something some one little thing then the end of the at the end of the day you're going to question everything it completely kills independence it doesn't push us back to the dark ages our dark ages were extremely good you see you can't have it both ways <laughs> on the one hand we talk of Uh, this great inclusive civilization that india was and is that this nation which celebrates diversity hundreds of languages religions this that and the other and that we talked of adult franchise in the 1890s still is talking of adult franchise while the americans in 1960s are still debating whether a black man can come in 
and now we have created a society with through, through these bans and this narrow mindedness that even obama <laughs> can come and lecture us on how to be inclusive <laughs> so you can't have it that way any question of banning anything in a country for example in a country where people eat from rats to cockroaches to grasshoppers to snakes to dogs to anything where is the question of banning anything how are you going to be inclusive what is because in everything somebody else's feelings got get hurt i think that, that's that's an interesting point and let me let me throw that to everybody so shaina the question is if we set up a precedent where we're going to be banning things because somebody likes it or doesn't like it or agrees or doesn't agree we could be in for a really really repressive society and as and as we were just hearing um that's not been indian history we've always been one of the most tolerant nations on this planet and is there a chance that we could be doing away with some of that you know i just want to make a point with the docu film uh the fact that it was taken under the garb of being some kind of research and then goes on to be an interview how they procured those permissions etc is foregone but what really upsets me as a woman of india and i think if everyone's entitled to their expression and view i am entitled to that as well is this typical mindset where you have a pervert who has been a perpetrator of crime who comes out and gets this international platform and then goes on to say the most bizarre line and i just want to read one part of it the line that i think you were about to quote i agree is a is a disgraceful line by having you repeat that line on us right now on the program we could have debated it we could have discussed it we could have all said that's an absolutely outrageous mindset but there's a ban so we can't discuss that line now we can't talk about it we can't say what what repressive mindsets are because that's what we've done we banned it now what are we going to do yeah. now let's <coughs> sit and discuss women's rights in general when you have men who are vulnerable some of which are watching all of this oh and thinking gosh. that dude he raped this woman he is in tihar jail and he has a platform to express his opinion yeah, on an international forum uh, it is a it is a point is, which is how many is serious China, China, did you see the documentary and you may choose to disagree but i may have an opinion no i've read the transcripts like mr dave from top <laughs> to bottom <laughs> and i think that it's extremely <laughs> demeaning when you talk about but you know just because and then you know because when you talk we about just, research no, and again, then to have this kind of an interview two things so the debate doesn't get cluttered between the two whenever anyone keeps saying i have a right to express no one is saying you don't that's why we are here talking about it we are saying whether that right should be taken away by not allowing you to say it the most perverse argument in favor of the ban is that it will inspire incite and stoke people into becoming rapists i think that's the most bizarre by that logic you shouldn't report murders because by that logic you know people will attempt to murder you shouldn't report crime you should remain a country in denial i think it is pernicious logic my belief is that no mother upon seeing the film will either encourage her child oh beta go and become mukesh singh or become a uh, child sobraj the reality shaina is we cannot be a society which is forced to interpret current affairs contemporary sociological behavior along one toed line what the government is planning to do it's creating 1984 in 2015 we can't bring back george orwell You can't have Big Brother. You can't have a situation like you have in Bangalore. You can't create a society which is perilously in fear. And my final comment here is: the people of India are not regressive. It is the politicians of India who inculcate this regression and then want to transmit okay. that regression I, across the okay, people. Okay, I, I want to get I want to get China in again and then go to Dushant and Kiran. But just China, you know something? I did, I'm not saying that it's the greatest documentary. There can be people who have issues around it. but i'm just saying at the end of the day people will have different they reactions to no, it no, 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 my no, question is i'm know. also questioning on the on the fact that by banning whether you can actually stop people from seeing it actually encourage so people and you make sure that they're watching it it should be one but limited point i, I understand I, brands yeah. okay people yeah. are saying brand india is being shamed do you think when the new york times reported on the nirbhaya incident we were not being shamed when our own newspapers including the channel that belongs to a newspaper group said delhi india's rape capital we aren't being shamed the reality is what we should be ashamed of is the supreme court didn't have the time to hear this trial for the last 12 months <coughs> what we should be ashamed of I is that this trial there. hasn't come to fruition what we should and, be ashamed actually, of actually what actually here it's moved that there are other cases where they have been even tardier to justice but so dushyant i know you have a different point of view so let me get you in on this personally speaking and as a lawyer i am opposed to bans per se 
So it's not that I am supporting bans. I am a complete votary of freedom. But there are limits to freedom. Let me tell you one thing about the documentary. It's not the content which is troublesome. What you have rightly said, Vikram, is what is important. What the nation needs to address today is the failure of the law enforcement Correct. agencies and failure of the legal system, as, as Soel lawyer, said, rightly you points out. On a piece Our judicial watching. system is absolutely archaic. Our judges are, with great respect to, I mean, some of them who are outstanding, <laughs> most of them are not even competent to handle cases like this on a, you know, on a, in a manner as they should. And the real difficulty, therefore, arises is that we have no priorities so far as the legal system is concerned. We as a nation need to bring some kind of pressure on the judicial system Absolutely. and but we must tell why, our judges no, that you that's must why you need to shock this kind the system. of cases first. Rather but than that's take why you need to shock the system by saying this is the, the face of politicians. You know? But Dushyant, that's why you need to shock the system, not brush and everything under the carpet and saying let's not listen to anybody. Let's try and keep quiet about it. That's why I, you need I to don't, shock the system. Vikram, I don't agree. We don't need a sadist. We don't need a sadistic man to tell us as to what this our priorities are. You don't need a sadistic man. Are reasonable but human beings. We are all okay, Vikram, can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? You see the biggest, best anti-disinfectant uh, is sunlight. The more you expose what's happening around, what are the pitfalls, the better you're going to get. I agree so with that you. means you're in favor, right? Uh, absolutely. But, so one, why are your MPs in and, parliament and, and shouting against and, 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 Yeah, and Why are your that, MPs, why is the Congress but, party demanding a ban? After a long time, the Congress has had a spokesperson who's a bit logical. So my question as a citizen to you is, do you agree with the dolts who are representing your party in parliament who wanted this documentary banned? Yes or no? So again, And you're so, not going to lose your job because your leader is missing. No, no, first question, 12. <laughs> And probably, you know, <laughs> most of my colleagues miss our leaders so, so much that, you know, it's very interesting to see that once he's back, you know, we'll sure make sure that you get I always say, you but want one is only one missed, one missing. One I think definitely the statements made by some of my colleagues, I definitely say that it's not in sync with what the modern guys think. Okay. Yeah, you are. I'm so glad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Three cheers for that. that.